Hello and welcome to the Music Initial Teacher Education at Sussex University. Um, I'm the Curriculum Tutor for um, Music and my name is Stella Knight and I'm going to guide you through this very short presentation about what it's like um, to train to be a music teacher at Sussex. So in this presentation we're going to cover what it's like to be a music um, teacher in secondary school, what kind of subject knowledge you might need, um, what to expect during um, the induction period at university and during the Friday training sessions and how we teach the course here at Sussex um, and also how you can prepare for the course yourselves and also for um, an interview. So the first thing to look at is um, what are the year groups that I, you would be teaching and so um, you'll be teaching Key Stage 3 music which in most schools is but uh, is year seven to nine. Um, in some schools, they have a two-year uh, key stage three, um, but in the in the majority of schools, it's a three-year key stage three, um, where everybody um, learns music, and usually that would be approximately one lesson of music a week, um, for every class. Uh, then you'd be teaching uh, GCC music, and uh, this would be an option group. Um, so people who had selected to do um, GCC music um, and usually would um, have an instrument that they specialised in um, and be a very keen musician. And then in some of the um, school placements, um, you'd have the option to teach key stage five music, which is sick, which is the sixth form. Um, so you might get a chance to um, have a go at um, teaching some A-level music or music technology, um, or even the B-tech. So um, what will you actually be teaching? Well, at key stage three, um, the curriculum is guided by um, the national curriculum um, and there is always an integration of the three main kind of elements of music which are the performing, the composing and the listening and appraising. And um, the actual schemes of work and the choice of um, projects is done by the schools individually. So as long as schools are, are following the national curriculum, um, they can actually decide and design their own schemes of learning. So um, it would depend very much on what you were, um, which school you were in for your teaching placements. Um, but you would have um, usually project based and usually um, would have some element of performing, composing, improvising, and listening and appraising within each of those topics. Usually at Key Stage 3, it's very practical um, with some some written work um, but mainly it should be about music making music practically um, at key stage four um, students follow uh, a GCC or BTEC curriculum most often um, the GCC curriculum and that is uh, follows a similar kind of format to the key stage three music in, in that you you have performing composing and listening and appraising um, the performing composing part of the GCC is what we call non-examined assessment, NEA for short. And so that's probably what you remember as being coursework. Um, and then the um, listening and appraising part is um, an exam, which they do at the end of the course, usually around May time in year 11. So for you, um, for your own subject knowledge, these are the things that I think are really important coming into um, training to be a teacher. The first thing is that you need to be confident um, to sing. You don't have to be an amazing singer, um, but you have to be able to support and teach singing in school. So you have to feel confident in your own voice um, that you can um, uh, share that voice with your students and kind of be able to teach them how to actually um, sing. So you've got to feel confident in using your voice in a lesson. Um, you've also got to be able to accompany to a certain extent on an instrument of your choice. So it might not be that you choose the piano, but you might choose a guitar or ukulele or some, something like that, that you can use in lessons to support um, singing or instrumental playing. Um, because part of the role of being a music teacher is that you're there to kind of guide your class and your students in, in creating a performance. So you need to be able to do that at the piano or guitar 
or um, an accompanying inst an instrument of your choice. Um, you've got to be able to understand how a keyboard instrument works because quite a lot of the time in lessons um, students will be taught how to use a keyboard. Um, more often than not you'll find that most key stage three lessons um, if the students are learning how to use an instrument that potentially would be a keyboard instrument sometimes um, it's a ukulele as well um, so we do look at ukulele um, but we expect you to understand the layout of a keyboard and how that works. Um, you should have a good understanding of music theory it's really important that you are understanding the theory that's required for the GCSE. So if you don't feel that your theory is um, up to about grade five level, then that's something that you would need to work on before you started the course. Um, and of course, increasingly, music technology is used um, in key stage three, four and five lessons. Um, so you have to have a basic understanding of what sequencing is. Um, and also it will be desirable for you to have an understanding of score writing software such as MuteScore or Sibelius. Um, it's also really important that you have an understanding of the history of classical music because in any of the GCSE courses um, there is an element of classical music which you need to be able to teach. So having a really good grounding in classical music will support everything that you do in the classroom. So what would you um, expect to be doing during um, the induction, which is, which is usually um, three weeks um, before you go into um, schools for the first time. Uh, and then once you're in schools, you'll be joining us at the university on Fridays um, throughout the year, um, especially in the first sort of two thirds of the year when you're in every Friday. Um, so what we tend to do in our um, induction and also our uh, Friday sessions is we do lots of practical um, obviously considering and thinking about teaching methods and pedagogy um, we look at performing composing and listening um, and we get you to come up and have a practice of leading um, performances and leading presentations and starter activities and um, and so we do try to to get you involved as much as possible in practical music making in the first um, few weeks and then of course you get to also try uh, uh, out some of the things that you um, will, will be doing in the classroom so um, looking at different mu music strategies um, for example you know teaching someone uh, maybe something through call and response or teaching something through modeling and um, and, and and looking at how we can use um, uh, different types of score to support students in preparing um, a performance or a composition or, or a, li a listening task. Um, you, you do get the chance to actually try out um, teaching um, with the, your fellow trainees, um, which is always at the at first look a bit nerve wracking standing up in front of a group of adults um, but it's a, it's a, always a really supportive environment and, and we do a lot of peer work and peer um, comments and we really try to sort of get you to become reflective practitioners so to be able to think and, about what you've done and think about whether you um, how you could improve um, and um, usually the fellow fellow trainees are really good at um, come up, coming up with really good suggestions of what actually went really well um, because sometimes when you're standing up there in front of a class uh, for the first time um, it can you can feel like you know everything's gone wrong but actually um, your trainees are really, your fellow trainees are usually really good at um, offering support and advice of, of things that have gone really well. Um, so that's, that's a really, it's a really lovely thing to do um, at the start of the course to get you ready for going into schools. Um, there is a lot of discussion. So although um, quite a lot of the time I'll be kind of talking to you and, and, and supporting you in understanding um, different teaching methods, pedagogies, looking at literature, looking at um, uh, the different ways um, of teaching music. There is obviously a lot of opportunity to discuss things um, and also reflect. Um, I'm, and often, because I'm teaching uh, as well three days of the week in a, in a secondary school, there's often lots of things that I can kind of, uh, you know, scenarios that I can talk to the, to the trainees about and they can kind of reflect on what, what they have done in that situation or consider, you know, how it might be similar or different um, in their training school. So we do have a lot of uh, chats and a lot of discussion, um, which, is, which is great, really, really good. 
And then we also have um, specialist workshops um, designed to support you through the assignments. Um, so that is is an important part of the course, um, but you are guided really, really well to, to ensure that you do the best that you possibly can in your assignments. Um, obviously, it is really important that this is an academic course and you need to realise that there will be um, reading um, involved and you will have to um, make sure that you engage in uh, literature and pedagogy and uh, research them surrounding music education. So it is, um, our lectures are usually kind of tailored partly towards that, but also that is that is up to you to be doing um, in your own time as well. So you will have a reading list and um, you will need to go away and do your own research as part of the course as well. So what to expect? Hopefully a job at the end of the course. Um, I think that's what we all um, hope happens um, and if you succeed in the course, uh, which I'm sure you would, um, then um, there are some amazing schools in Sussex and surrounding areas or if you choose to, to obviously move and teach elsewhere. Um, teaching music is such a fantastic job. I've been doing it for 20 years now uh, so and I'm still here to tell the tale so I would um, I wholeheartedly recommend their job and um, this is really just the, the course is obviously just the beginning of that really exciting adventure that you'll all be on. Um, so if you thought this is what you'd like to do, this is really um, what you're committed to, um, how can you um, prepare for the course and obviously for an interview? Well, I put lots of links on this presentation for you um, to be able to have a look at um, it's important to make sure you read some key literature before your interview. I would read um, at least the summary of the National Plan for Music Education and also the National Curriculum, which is very short, so that won't take you long. Um, I would have an, an understanding and an overview of um, the GCC specifications, um, just to kind of have an idea of the level of subject knowledge that you would need to study the course. Um, and then, of course, um, making sure that your subject knowledge is secure. Um, being prepared uh, in an interview to be asked potentially some music theory questions and also music his history questions um, up to GCC level of understanding. Um, and also that you're able to accompany, like I said at the beginning, singing um, or instrumental music from an instrument of your choice. So whether that's keyboard or guitar, um, because we do get you to um, to teach us a song in uh, in the interview so uh, be prepared um, for that. Um, ensuring that you're confident in using your voice like I said um, is really important part of being a music teacher so make sure that you are um, to, you know getting your voice ready um, and maybe doing some some more exercises and that kind of thing for the interview um, because you will be teaching us um, a song as part of that. And then just looking at music technology, um, it might be that you're very confident using music technology, which would be fantastic. But if not, just having a good overview of what's out there um, with regards to um, sequencing programmes and also score writing programmes. Um, so I've put a few links there for you to have a look at some of the things that are being used in schools now. So thank you very much. Um, and obviously, if you've got any more questions, um, you can email me at um, my email address.